Hi, I'm Marcy Mulligan with Celtic Culture Alliance. Today we're going to talk about St. Andrew's Day, the national holiday in Scotland, which is across the seas, and we're going to be talking about how the creation of bagpipes happened over there. Plus, we're going to talk a little bit about the sporin and my friend Katie and the kilt she wears. Today we're going to be reading Bagpipes, Beasties, and Boggles by Tim Archibald. This is a story from Scotton long ago. If you trudged a twisty track and rambled in the rain, if you jumped a thistle thicket and splashed across a stream, if you climbed a heather hill and spied a secret glen, there you would find in a sunny house of stone lived Charlie McCandlewick. He did not have many visitors. Most days, Charlie worked in his beautiful garden. He grew raspberries and rhubarb, potatoes and porridge spoons. But at night, in the cold and dark, rain or snow, he would go to work. Charlie McCandlewick was a night sweep. But wait, cheery cherub, before you rush off for hot chocolate and a handful of happy giant butter biscuits, tighten your pajamas because Charlie McCandlewick did not sweep chimneys. He did not sing and dance about sweeping chimneys. It was the boggle creatures of the night that he swept away. All of the things that knock and bump, shuffle, shift, hiss, and whisper in your house at night. The scratching and skittering in the old cupboard is not a friendly rabbit sewing trousers. It is not a cheerful mouse saving crumbs for the winter. It is something and it's in your room. People in farms and villages, in castles and cottages would send for old Charlie. Something is knocking at night, they told him. We're frightened, Charlie, said the children. A boggle has blockened our bread and puggled our porridge, they told him. What a fuss, you might say, about a few bumps in the night. But remember, long ago, in Charlie McCandlewick's time, there was no electricity, no television, no telephones, no teddy bears. It was a dark and dingy time. Now be brave and read on about when the lights go out. Skelpies live under the floor. They eat fluff and crumbs. Nippers and nabbers wait under your bed for a foot to appear. A greedy girdle will eat your last piece of bread or your last chocolate in the box. A fankle twists your clothes into terrible knots. Coughing crokies flap about in cupboards. Squeakers are creatures that live on dark stairs and a granach ties on your clothes in the middle of the night. Your underpants will be inside out and all of your socks lost. But Charlie knew what to do. He made his bags from the best Scottish thistle cloth. He wore an Isle of Harris double tweed Atlantic overcoat. He had a night lamp of pine resin, a heather roop sweeping brush, ash poles twisted with cow horn, granite grip glue and pine cone string binding, thorn-proof leggings, boots made in Scotland, number eight whistle-twist rope, a cheese and pickle sandwich for a snack, and leather gloves. And he was ready to go. With Volcano brand gloves, he grabbed the nippers and nabbers that goggled in the gloom beneath the bed. He crept with silent squirrel boots and caught the scalpies that scuttered under farmhouse floors. With his heather root brush, he swept away the shadows and shapes on twisting stairs. With an owl oil lamp, he lured wailing wigamaleries. Charlie caught creatures that clacked on claws and winged at windows and muttered at midnight. And he put all of these creatures into a special bag made from thistle cloth. The boggle creatures did not like being caught and jumbled together in a bag, so they began to screech. They bit and spit, they growled and howled, they wailed and flailed, they moaned and groaned, they flapped and fluttered, they thrashed and crashed and gnashed their teeth. They cried and tried to scrape, but could not. So they went to sleep. Charlie was paid for his night sweeping. He packed up his tools, gathered up the thistlecloth bags, and walked home for breakfast. 
You might now be worrying about nippers and nabbers under your bed. You might be thinking, I must have some silent squirrel boots. But wait, this is not the end of the story. After a breakfast of porridge and raspberries, Charlie walked up the windy wood. He cut a bundle of pine and soaked it in a barrel filled with a secret mixture of gold and barley and six kinds of rain. He shaped and drilled the pine into pipes. He rubbed each pipe with duck oil and whipped them together with wildcat whiskers. Charlie used granite grip glue to join the pipes to one of his thistle cloth bags. What do you think he was making? Why, Charlie McCandlewick was making bagpipes, of course. How bagpipes work? The piper blows into the thistle cloth bag and gives it a good slap. The creatures inside wake up and begin to wail. The piper blows hard into the bag and gives it a squeeze. Inside the bag, the creatures fight and flight and flap. They screech and squirrel. They wail and drone. The piper moves his fingers up and down the chanter just to keep them warm. The piper must keep blowing and squeezing and walking and looking important. Thanks to Charlie McCandlewick, Scottish bagpipes are the best and most famous in the world. The music of the bagpipes can make you feel proud and sad. You might dance over sharp swords or buy a kilt and stride about like a great chieftain. You might want to grow a big red beard. Remember, if you ever learn to play, that bagpipes are alive. They sometimes need a drink and a crust of bread to eat. But take care. You must never, ever, for any reason, open the thistle cloth and look inside. Hi, so today we're going to be making a craft and you can put it on your doorknob or you can put it um, on your Christmas tree and you'll find that there's attachments that you can cut this out and color it in and make it yourself at home with me. But today I have the easier version which is already done um, for us to put together. So the history of holly is it grows in all the Celtic nations and because it stays green all year long the original people who lived there, the Celts, used to bring it inside their house. And they believed that it had some magical power to ward off evil and to bring them good luck because it never died. Like the way normal leaves turn colors or turn brown, these leaves are always green. So they believed it had magical powers. And then Christianity came to Scotland and they decided to recognize it as the crown. They would say that the crown was made from the holly leaves. And they made songs out of it too. Um, but we're gonna make this right now. So, uh, it's a very simple craft. Hopefully you've colored in your green leaves. If not, spend some time coloring them in. And then we're just gonna take tape and put them on the leaves. And in Scotland, they bring in this inside and mistletoe. And maybe some people have heard about mistletoe because the idea is that you can kiss someone you like under, if you're under mistletoe with somebody you like, you're supposed to give them a kiss. But also it brings good luck and joy into your home. And mistletoe also has a really pretty smell. But they both grow all year long and stay green. So you're just going to put your stickers on this. And then you can color in your circles. And then you can put glitter, some kind of fun stickers to decorate this so that it catches the lights when it comes in the rooms. See what I'm doing? You pick your stickers out in them. And at the very top, in your version, I have a hole for you to punch out. And you can punch it out and put a string in and hang it up. Or you can put tape on the back and tape it on your door. And it's just a fun way to remember that um, how the Celts celebrated Christmas. Thank you.